the Department of Homeland Security's top watchdog reportedly abandoned plans earlier this year to try and recover deleted Secret Service text messages. Mm. Joining us now, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter for The Washington Post, Carol Lenig. She and her colleague, Maria Schicchetti, broke the latest development uh, in the growing controversy. Uh, this is really, it's, it's just hard to believe that they are gone. I know of litigation where text messages are found, they're findable. How could they be completely gone? You know, Mika, uh, colleagues of mine at The Washington Post have been plumbing that exact issue and that question, and they produced a story uh, this weekend, which was essentially saying that a lot of techies, thousands of techies around the country believe, as you do, there's got to be a way to recover these. However, they also found that when they stress tested the Secret Service's explanation, if it's to be trusted, that there was no backup system. In other words, they all use iPhones, the Secret Service agents, and there is not an iCloud backup system. When they asked techies and experts around the country, could we recreate this if the phones were reset, there was a big pause because if those backup systems are blocked from the agent's phones, it will be very difficult. Now, we don't know everything, but we do know another thing about the inspector general, which you just highlighted. And that is the agency that was investigating where are these records that are by law required to be maintained, they, they found a way that they could collect the phones in February of the Secret Service agents and the staff were working to try to do this with other Department of Homeland Security divisions. And at the last minute, at the 12th hour, the Inspector General, James Kafari and his front office team halted the plan and quashed it and said, we're not taking their phones. We're not gonna try to recover their texts, which um, we don't know the answer why. We don't know why an investigator decided essentially not to take new evidence. Carol, I've, I've got to ask you, in all your years of reporting, have you ever heard of an inspector general behaving this way? First of all, an inspector general who knows the United States Congress is looking for records, an inspector general who knows that the uh, uh, Congress is trying to get to the bottom of something, uh, and the inspector general uh, calls off a search and then doesn't notify Congress for five, six months. It's, it's so foreign to me. I know you and I have been around Washington a, a pretty long time. It's hard to be shocked by anything. But when I hear the word inspector general, I still sort of straighten up and say, OK, these these people are, you know, apolitical. They're going to get to the bottom of this. I, I don't recall an inspector general, um, I would say bungling, but it seems purposefully hiding evidence from Congress. It is uh, bizarre. And, and yes, been around a while, have never heard one just like this. Now, the Department of Homeland Security, Joe, um, has been plagued by inspector generals whose methods have come under scrutiny. Uh, the, the previous inspector general, I think one or two before Mr. Kafari, was charged with a federal crime. And so this agency has been suffering from a lack of really uh, toothy investigative power or, or, you know, rigorous investigations, let's put it that way. But you're absolutely right. The way that you phrase that is exactly how I would write it in a story. What in the world is going on when an investigator is literally offered evidence. In this case, the, the reason the Department of Homeland Security, let me finish that, that sentence, I'm sorry. This investigator was offered evidence and turned it down, basically said no thanks. Mm. In this instance, what we found was the reason the Department of Homeland Security began thinking we should use our amazing cyber forensic team to collect the and recover these texts is because another division of the Homeland Security Department said, look, we don't have the capacity 
to find our own texts. We don't know how to do that, but you're asking for this information. So we're gonna give you our phones. You collect them and see if your cyber team can reconstruct this. But Mr. Kafari's office basically kiboshed that whole thing with their staff and said, never mind investigators who work for us, who are trained, we don't want that evidence. I spoke wow. with a congressional uh, source who said when they learned this, their jaw dropped to the table. Uh, they said, look, how can it be that an investigator turns down information that is willingly, voluntarily handed over? What kind of investigator in any office does that? And that's the question we will continue to raise and, and try to answer.